Hey, Eileen here from Relax and Expand. I have with me Luis Mojica of Holistic Life Navigation. Uh, Luis is a somatic therapist, life coach, and whole foods nutrition counselor. He healed himself through learning to listen more deeply, listen to life, listen to people, listen to his own body. So we're going to talk about a little bit about the healing process today and also how animism holds uh, the container for healing and um, part of your how you came into that. But initially, um, I think a lot of people have a, a health crisis uh, before they're willing to make the changes that they need to in their life. So, you know, for me, it was ending up in the emergency room with emergency surgery and those um, days laying in the hospital bed began the inquiry of how did I get here? How do I avoid <laughs> getting here again? What changes do I make? And, and so I think a lot of people come to that before they make the changes. But from my understanding, your process came, uh, even though you were, you were um, suffered a lot of um, health issues, which you can tell us about, but your process came through an opening and a creative kind of way when you picked up that guitar, mm -hmm. when you began to play music, when you began to write poetry. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about uh, a little bit about your background and about how how your process happened uh, in that creative way rather than the health crisis for um, your healing. Mm, I love that question. Um, yeah, you know, I grew up with a lot of body shame. And because I was born into a, a unique body. And as I was growing up, I was experiencing a lot of relational trauma. So lots of bullying and sexual trauma and just ruptures in my everyday social environment of not feeling safe, not feeling loved, not feeling open uh, to other people. And what was interesting is the way I soothed that, the way I soothed the anxiety and pain and shame and trauma from all these events was through eating. And I got really sick at a really young age. It was, I think it started when I was 11, 11 or 12. Oh. Yeah, I, I had gotten high cholesterol and I gained a lot of weight and I had lots of pain and really bad GI issues. And um, I was pre-diabetic and I had asthma and I was on a nebulizer oh, three no. two times a day so I could breathe. And yeah. cystic acne and insomnia. I mean, it was like my body, my young body was hit with so many ailments. Mm -hmm. And I think it would have gotten to the point that you're referring to, you know, it, had I not been so young, maybe it would have hit a place where I could have easily seen myself going to the hospital or going on medication or having some irreversible damage. Mm -hmm. um, however, suddenly, spontaneously, I picked up this guitar one day that I had in my bedroom I had it. It's funny. I have one hanging up it's, right now. It's not. Is that that <laughs> it's, one it's behind you? One. It's not that no, one. <laughs> I wish it was that one. No, that was a gift. Um, this one's long gone. It was an eBay find for like thirty dollars when I was you know fifteen. Um, but I had it hanging on the wall just kind of like the way it looked. I didn't even play. And I just grabbed it one day and I strummed it, and these feelings awoken in my body, and I didn't really understand it. It was so somatic at the time. I only actually started understanding it in the last year, but these feelings aw awoken the sense of awakened a sense of safety and yeah. belonging. And that's where that animism comes in because my mm. body started relating to the being of the sound coming through the guitar. And then from there, I, like you said, I started writing poetry and lyrics, which was the first time I was able to externalize these really early childhood traumatic experiences that I never even let myself remember, right? So that's how, that's how spontaneously I, I woke up from that pain. So you began to actually form a relationship with yourself, because prior to that, it was just battling these forces of, you know, abuse and just trying to manage the symptomology. That's is exactly that... right. Okay. That's spot and on. So then as you began this creative process, it began the relationship for you. I'm, I'm really happy you're putting in those terms because 
that's really what healed healed me or allows me to continue healing or being in touch is the relationship with self. Mm. I didn't have that. I, I, I did as a child. And then so many events had occurred and I just became more and more and more disconnected from me. And so mm-hmm. the, the food and the soothing of the deep pain and anguish wasn't a relationship. It was like an avoidance because I didn't know how to be with that. And yeah. so the, the music and the writing of, of words gave me this like place to actually relate to myself and learn how to do that. Excellent. That That's so beautiful. It's just so, it's so beautiful. What a beautiful process and understanding how, uh, how powerful that relationship is, you know, so often we think it's, it's um, selfish or, you know, it's not wear it out, the healing process, it's something I have to get or something, you know, and it's very mm-hmm. beautifully simple in here. On um, a lot of times, I think when people get, get to that point, however, they get to it, saying, you know, I need to make changes, I'm, I'm not healthy, or I'm not feeling well, or all my relationships are tanked, and they get to that point, and they see themselves I think way further down the path, they see themselves as the person that they want to be, as they see themselves as that, as like almost the healing process completed. I, I know, um, um, you know, that there's that saying, the, the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. And I, I think often we see ourselves like way down the, the pathway and I know from my own self, I, um, you know, I went through another little mini health crisis at 40, um, which was prior to the emergency room visit where, uh, you know, I was tired, gaining weight, fatigued. Uh, I knew I needed to make changes in my life. I uh, did some reading, went on a raw vegan diet for two weeks, and it was beautiful. I started to get energy. I started, but also the emotions started rising. So I I saw this perfect place where I needed to be and the emotions began to arise and uh, and that's why the diet failed because I couldn't handle that relationship with myself wasn't complete and at that time I didn't have teachers and access to materials and things like that, so the the this very, very. um, um, Beautiful part about how you teach and how you work is building that capacity. So we can take these intimate little sweet steps in finding and getting in relationship with ourselves that that keeps us from that, uh, you know, okay, I'm going to heal and do all these things and then crash and then go into the backward spiral of I can't do this kind of thing. So your your work is beautiful in this. uh, building capacity. So could you speak a little bit about um, the role capacity plays in the foundation of any healing process? Mm, absolutely. Capacity is the most humbling thing when you learn how to bow to it. Because, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's outside of us, right? It's not it's funny because it's outside of us, but it's inside of us. It's, it's the body. It's the body's physiological limitations. Um, it could be your circumstances, limitations. It could be, you know, if I walk straight ahead, I'm going to hit this wall. Like that's the capacity. I can't go beyond that physically. Mm -hmm. It's outside of our control because it's what is, it's part of reality. It's nature's law and the body is an extension of nature's law. So we tend to do exactly what you said, where the mind has this, um, projected idea of what healing looks like and when it should happen. And so we have this goal that says, I'm going to heal, right? And in that statement is such a burden that actually creates more adrenaline and stress and sometimes trauma, because we're trying to grasp and rush and get to this place of perfection, or Mm -hmm. um, less suffering, which I completely understand why we want to get there so quickly. However, just like in your example, you can be having the diet that supports you, you can be doing the practices that support you. If the body has a low capacity for expansion, anything that starts expanding us is going to feel somewhat threatening. And that's especially true when we have trauma. 
because expansion reads as vulnerability and vulnerability feels dangerous. So when we're taking away the foods or behaviors or um, any kind of compulsiveness that soothes that charge, when we take away those things, that means we feel more of the charge. We feel more of the emotions. We feel more of our, our true voices that come through, our authenticities, our, our nature. And when we haven't developed a capacity for actually hearing that and sitting with that, it's overwhelming and mm -hmm. it's inconvenient and scary. So it, the mind wants to get to this place, but the body only has so much capacity for a certain part of that place. So it might just start with, for breakfast, I eat a meal and I sit down for five minutes before I check my emails. I might only have five minutes to sit still knowing I have emails to check, but that's the beginning of building my capacity to eventually have more space before I feel like I have to work or move or do. It's a very simple example, but that's exactly what capacity building is, those tender small steps. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I love that. It's, it's just, uh, and your work is so, a, a lot of people teach, um, you know, somatic and mindfulness, you know, body presence practices, but uh, it's the container and I, oh, I don't even want to use that word container because it, it's your your um, your delivery sense hmm. is uh, embraces this unconditionalness for that very slow capacity building. Like it, it really truly embraces after going through your your six week course almost a couple of times at this point. <laughs> um, that, <laughs> It, it's it's a a wonderful, uh, gentle, um, unconditional understanding and respect for that that process. So, um, how did you? Was your belief in animism uh, always there? Did it develop? Um, how? Uh, in the healing process, seeing and feeling that relationship to ourselves and each part of ourselves it is such an important part in uh, continuing and maintaining and also holding, uh, building a greater, having the capacity not only within us, but like you said before, without. Mm. So how did that discovery of that uh, was it a discovery? Was it, you know, tell us a little bit about your, uh, your go with that. Yeah, I love that. I'm touched by how you experienced the course. I'm so glad that comes off, that my teaching comes off that way for you. Um, and it, it's interesting, similar to the somatic work, it was something just that always felt part of me, but I didn't have words for it. I didn't know there was a culture for it. I didn't understand that it, it was um, a subject that could even be talked about, the word animism, <laughs> you know? It was kind of just a way of being. Um, but I do remember very clearly one day picking up a book about um, paganism, like Celtic paganism. And I remember reading the book and I remember seeing these deities, these pictures of them and these descriptions of them and you know, the man who's born from the tree and is part tree, part man. And I remember, you know, I was born in an intersex body. So I had like the biologies of male and female characteristics. And so for me, it was like, oh, here's an example of these mythological beings that were made up of everything. And they were just as natural, you know, as someone who's more standard. And it was this big, I think I was 13 when I found that book. And it was this big moment of realizing, wow, like uh, my body is just as natural as your body and that tree and that bird. And I started just feeling really connected to the other than human world because when I would look at it, at them, it was so, um, it was just so profoundly beautiful that a tree could have these huge tumor-like growths and we called it gorgeous. And if that was on a person, it would be an issue. And mm. I, I was so moved by mm. that at a young age that what we call ugly in us is like gorgeous and perfect in nature. So I started getting into animism just intuitively understanding, wow, there's many different beings on this planet. We're all equally valuable and we're all of one another. And so that relationship to everything felt like really natural from that place. 
And it, yeah, it helped you recognize your own, it, your, that relationship with yourself, like I'm okay, no matter, right. no matter what. So it, it helps that it helps and it holds the, the, the whole process of healing when you're, when you're embracing um, nature has always been uh, an important part for me as well to in um in becoming grounded and it, it's always there you know it is always there in its purity and um dichotomy and variety mm. and it's it's such a safe place to be when we are in process of transition and whatnot completely agree so we're almost out of time so I, how can people uh, reach you? What do you have available? And is there another six week course coming? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have, so the way to, the easiest way to reach me is my, my practice is called Holistic Life Navigation. And so you can go to holisticlifenavigation.com or you can search it on Facebook or on podcasts or through Instagram. And that's the ways you can see my work. And what I do and, and maybe even experience some of it with exercises I share, especially with the podcast, there's a lot of information there. Um, next year, we have four six week courses planned out already. So fantastic. So, yeah, I, I'm so, so happy excited. about that, because it's it's a phenomenal, phenomenal um, way to integrate changes. I, like I said, I, I took the course just for information and I got so much out of it in my personal development. I had to mm. take it again. Mm. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I love that. You know, that's a, a recent phenomenon where people take it again. And I love that because it's because <laughs> you, you, what I love about the course is everybody, everyone gets the information for life. You can download everything. Mm. But what makes it so special is the somatic component of in real time, this group is relating and learning together. And there's something in that field of like sharing on Slack and reading and showing up to the live sessions that just, I think, goes beyond the recorded teaching themselves. So I understand why someone would want to take it more than once. It makes sense to me. Absolutely. Well, it's also, even though it's the exact same course, uh, there's a whole different collective of people. And so you, right. have, you have different nuances that are um, uh, make it like a fresh course again mm. so I'm so glad you f I feel the same way I never get bored of it for that exact reason mm. it's always new because the collective informs it and it's amazing any other courses coming up um well the six week oh, actually I'm so excited we're going to be uh releasing a membership in January oh, and so wonderful. it's yeah, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be limited capacity for now because uh, talking about capacity, I, I don't want, I don't want to burn out. So it's going to be limited amount of people for every three months. We're going to open it up for more and let it grow, you know, slowly. Um, mm -hmm. But it's going to be a place where we can meet once a week in video and Slack, and there's going to be emails. And I'm going to spend every month going over one specific topic around trauma healing and somatic work. So it may be fawning one month, it may be um, reclaiming sexual energy another month, it may be animism, it's, it's going to be real deep dives into these subjects in a collective group. So I'm so excited for that. Beautiful. Uh, that's beautiful. on the horizon right now. Absolutely beautiful. We'll, we'll all look out for it. So. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today. It, it was wonderful having this time together. I've loved speaking with you. Thank you for having me.